Let's talk about your negative mindset. Coming up on today's video. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Justin Hebert, joined as always by Dr. Hugh Beatty, and we are continuing our look. Dr. Beatty at Napoleon Hill's 30 Causes of Failure. We are up to cause of failure number 10. It's what he calls this uh, unlikable personality, this negative personality. Mm -hmm. And it's not so much the, the person is unlikable. It's their attitude. Mm -hmm. We have met those people. And unfortunately, I can confess, I have at times in my <laughs> life been that person mm -hmm. who views everything through a negative light, Dr. Beatty. Oh, and yeah. when I do that... You don't really want to be around me a whole lot, do you? No, <laughs> no, no. In fact, I used to have a, a significant negative mindset, and um, you know, it's been pointed out to me. But I've learned to work on that. Yeah. But but if you surround yourself with negative people, guess what happens? It rubs off on you. Mm -hmm. And your environment—if you grow up in a negative environment—it rubs off on you. Yep. So I've really worked hard over the past few years to try to change that mindset and be more proactive, more positive. And actually, the mind is so powerful and incredible that, you know, even the Bible makes it clear, you know, that we need to be careful what we say because death and life's in the power of the tongue. Mm -hmm. And if you're thinking negative, it's going to most often come out of you because we speak from the abundance of our heart. That's right. And I saw I saw a report once. I don't, I don't remember mm -hmm. their exact statistics, but they're like, you know, mm -hmm. of, of the thoughts, of the thousands of thoughts that you have in a single day. Yes. 98, 99% of them are, are just repeated thoughts that you had the day before. Yes. Right? And so these habits and these patterns that we that we have, that we carry with us, are really just repeated stories, right? Mm -hmm. Something yeah. happened to me when I was eight, right. and I started to tell myself a story based on that experience. And now all of a sudden, I'm 20, I'm 30, I'm 40, I'm 50, and I want to change that story. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, why can't I change this mm -hmm. habit? Right. Because I've been practicing that exact same negative stereotype mm -hmm. every day for 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. That's a hard process to change. Now, the good news is it can be done. But, but what we have to start in the purpose of this video is to even just call attention to those negative patterns we find ourselves in, cause us to look at the world in a negative place and really turn people off towards success. Yeah, it's like my instructor in golf used to tell me. I said, I'm practicing all the time. He said, yeah. But he said, practice does not make perfect. Yeah. He said, practicing what you need to change makes you better. What if you're practicing so, the wrong things, Dr. Yeah. Bay? <laughs> so I was just grooving in, you know, bad habits. Of yes, thought. absolutely. And that's the same thing. If we are ruminating all the time on negative thoughts, and like what you were just saying earlier, then that's what's going to lead. It's going to manifest in how we live. And it is very repelling. I find that the more and more I have a positive attitude, a positive outlook, it draws people. Some people yeah. call that positive energy. You have, you have good vibes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, it's one of these things, I mean, living and working in this space, and certainly that's mm -hmm. my background. Here's one of the things that I think far too often mm -hmm. goes undersaid and understated in, in this kind of rewiring of the process. And mm -hmm. that is that the purpose sometimes of, reading these books, attending these mm -hmm. lectures, listening to these podcasts is not so that you get it right away. Right. In fact, I would argue that most of the time you don't get it right away. Mm -hmm. What it does is it calls attention to the story that you tell yourself. Yes. So I had honestly probably read 30, 50, 100 books on self-improvement before I started to actually say, wait a minute, mm -hmm. what's the story I'm telling myself mm -hmm. in this circumstance? Right. right. And it wasn't that any of those previous 50 or 100 books were bad. Mm -hmm. It was that they were working so hard mm -hmm. to rewire the negative story. Right. It took a hundred books before I could say, no, mm -hmm. no, 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 Justin, yes. that's not the story you need to tell yourself. Yes. It's not that that person dislikes mm -hmm. you. It's not that this circumstance is bad. Mm -hmm. It's not that the, the finances are terrible. It's not that this is, is out of, you know, unmanageable. Mm -hmm. It was those books that had to rewire my brain so that I could even notice mm -hmm. the negative stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and also keep in mind that you had to close those doors to negative activity so mm -hmm. that the doors of positive activity can come through. Yes. And and that's how more and more I look at things. Things are closing for a reason and new doors are opening for a reason. Yep. And and if it brings you peace, then that's the right direction you should yeah. be going in. And so what I find is that that positive vibe, that positive attitude draws people, especially it draws positive people to you. Yeah. Uh, and if you have a negative vibe, it draws negative people to you. Right. We, we tend to attract those things we're looking for, right? Yes. And so if I'm looking for negative experiences, 
I can find plenty of negative oh, yeah. experiences, Dr. Yes, Beatty, but if can. I'm looking for positivity, if mm-hmm. I'm looking for life, if I'm looking mm-hmm. for health or wealth or mm-hmm. abundance, I can find all of those mm-hmm. things as well. Yeah. One of the one of the analogies that stuck with me, I remember sitting, I was some sometime in college. I don't remember exactly mm-hmm. what, what grade I was in college, but we were mm-hmm. sitting listening to a a guest lecturer mm-hmm. and he said that the challenge that people often have in college mm-hmm. and the reason some people want to give up he says, anytime you learn, think of it like your your brain is this wild, untamed jungle. And the first yeah. time you learn something, the reason it's really hard mm-hmm. is because you just had to take this big old giant machete and try mm-hmm. to carve a path. Oh, yeah. And it's kind of there, and you made it to your destination. Mm-hmm. You got the right answer once, but that doesn't mm-hmm. mean the path is easily walkable. Mm-hmm. Then you have to walk it a second time, mm-hmm. right? So now, now I've done this activity twice, and then mm-hmm. I do it a third time. And each and every time, mm-hmm. the path gets a little bit clearer. Mm-hmm. I'm able to, to cut away a little bit more of the overgrowth and the vines. Okay. And eventually, after I've done a task 15, 20, 30 times now, now, now I can do that math problem really mm-hmm. quickly. Now I can yes. read the book. Now I can mm-hmm. write a better essay. Like, mm-hmm. you know, that was his connection in college. And that has been, mm-hmm. I mean, 20 something years later, a story that has been to him. Like, why is this task so difficult? Mm-hmm. Ah, because mm-hmm. I'm trying to cut a new path through the jungle in my brain. Mm-hmm. Right. So Justin, guess what? It's okay mm-hmm. for you to struggle. It's okay mm-hmm. for oh, you yes. to labor through this. Mm-hmm. And I can still be positive in it. Dr. Mm-hmm. Beatty, I really struggled today. And mm-hmm. you should say, Good. I'm Good. glad you struggled today, Good. Justin. Right. Good. That's the sort of encouragement I need because now I get to cut that path mm-hmm. even clearer next time. Yeah. Yeah. You're building those good, strong muscles. Uh, you know, just even in my, my office, every day is pretty much a struggle that Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, I see patients because people are coming with different types of uh, attitudes, different types of behavior. And so I'm constantly having to adjust. Mm-hmm. I try to stay positive. I try to stay upbeat. At the end of the day, I'm just beat because I'm emotionally yeah. uh, and <laughs> mentally drained. Yeah. And yeah. it really takes me to go home and recharge. Even though physically I'm not as tired, but just mentally I'm just drained. Yeah. And so so you do need that time to, to recover. In fact, I had a patient this past week who was dealing with a very stressful situation. And I heard this um, uh, professor who's actually a, a physician, she was talking about stress and how stress is now a worldwide pandemic problem. Mm-hmm. And that um, she was saying that we're taught to be more resilient, more resilient. But she said something real key, and I agreed with it. She said, no, you don't learn to be resilient with toxicity. Because mm-hmm. what happens, you're resilient because you put proper boundaries in. So let's say, for instance, Justin, I work hard Monday through Thursday, and I'm seeing a lot of patients, and I'm under a lot of stress during that time. Well, resilient comes in because on the weekend, I have those boundaries in place yes. that I can recover. Yep. But if you're pushing yourself to the limit seven days a week, 18 hours a day, there's no room for resilience. Right. So don't let anyone tell you to be resilient as they dump in more on you. Right. That's not resilient. Yeah, I, I don't need to be resilient <laughs> in, in toxicity in, no. in an unhealthy situation. <laughs> yes. Uh, I need to get out of it. Yes. I, I think I think that's such a it, – it's a it's a good analogy. It's a timely thing. I mean, for me personally, for our mm-hmm. family, this is kind of one of those quests that we have been on for the last number of years. We've been very intentional – about implementing a Sabbath, right? The, uh, God tells us to labor for yes. six days and rest mm-hmm. for one. And so over the last yes. couple of years, our family has put some very intentional parameters in place about when we all stop work on Friday yes. and what Saturday needs to look like in order to charge us up for you know starting yes. work on Sunday again. Yes. But it's not that we uh, get less done during the week. In fact, I found mm-hmm. the opposite is to actually mm-hmm. find that I, I'm more productive mm-hmm. Monday through mm-hmm. Friday now yes. because I know that Saturday is coming and I'm going to be able to honor that and be able to lean into that. And so by removing mm-hmm. you know, my no work parameters and installing mm-hmm. some very clear ones, yes. it's actually led to increased productivity mm-hmm. when I do work and mm-hmm. more satisfaction in the rest mm-hmm. when I take that rest. Yes. In fact, I've been thinking about that for years now at least the last five or six years about that Sabbath day rest because it was clearly in scripture even before the, the Ten Commandments was mm-hmm. given. So I think you're pursuing it in a good direction. Maybe I should follow your lead on that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you know, we need to rest. In fact, I'm just going through Exodus and it was talking about that, you know, that God had mentioned that six days you labor and the seventh day you rest. Yep. Yep. Uh, even rest in the fields every seventh year. And the year of Jubilee rest things. And God actually punished the nation of Israel because they did not rest their rest. fields every yeah. seventh year. And so he put them in the bondage for how many years? 490 years. Yep. So, I mean, 70 years because it represented the 70 years of not resting the land every seventh year, which yeah. is 490 years. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. So so our body needs that needs that rest. And, I mean, back to, to that point of, of negativity – it's that balance between good, healthy work yes. and good, healthy rest that allows us to repel that negativity. Yes. 
And so, you know, even just on, on the practical level, if somebody's like, well, how do I get started in that? Uh, Wednesday, this week has been extraordinarily busy. Mm -hmm. And I, I was gifted mm -hmm. uh, 30 minutes on Wednesday where I had a, a gap in my calendar that I was not expecting. Uh, I knew it was going to be back to back to back. I walked mm -hmm. out the door at 6 a.m. I was expecting to get mm -hmm. home at 9 p.m. with, with mm -hmm. zero break in between there. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, one meeting wrapped up early and one meeting starting got delayed. And so I had 30 minutes. And in that moment, it was what's the most productive 30 minutes thing that I can do. And you know what I did, Dr. Beatty? Rest. I sat there. <laughs> I, I just sat there. <laughs> yes, I rested. Mm -hmm. I, I relaxed. Mm -hmm. I meditated. I reflected. Mm -hmm. I prayed. And all of a sudden, you know what? Then it was like, mm -hmm. okay, it's time for the next yeah. meeting. I felt so much better. Yeah. Rather than try to cram more in, it was like, mm -hmm. here's 30 minutes to help me mm -hmm. re repel that negativity. I could feel yeah. it creeping in. When mm -hmm. I get emotionally tired, mm -hmm. that's when my brain goes, right? So as somebody who works hard to, to control what their brain thinks, mm -hmm. when I'm tired, mm -hmm. that gets harder to do. So by allowing yeah. myself to rest and recharge, mm -hmm. I could keep that negativity at bay. Yes, God gave you a gift of rest. Yes, yeah, and, 100%. And we need to appreciate that when it definitely comes our way. Yeah. And so for you, that idea of rest and negativity may look different, but you need to figure out what that balance is. Mm -hmm. That cause of failure is that negative personality. And it's not that people don't like you, it's that they sense that negative mindset you're having and are repelled from it. And so what does it look like to rewire that brain? Whether you need to rest, whether you need to cut some new neural pathways and carve that path through the jungle and developing habits, reading, meditation, sleep, connecting with a good doctor, whatever that is, start to rewire, rethink, and re-engage your personality so that you can clearly repel that negativity in your own life so that you can attract the positive life that you want. This is Dr. Beatty. I'm Justin Ebert. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you on a future video. I was recently coaching my son's basketball team, and our lesson for the season was the two things we can control when we're on the court, and it really translates into all of life. I can control my attitude, and I can control my effort. I can't control how much time is left. I can't control if the ref makes a bad call. I can control my attitude about those things, and I control the effort that I put in. And when it comes to this idea of negativity, that's really the same sort of thing. Yes, there will be a circumstance that happens to you, and you get to decide how to interpret that. You control your attitude, and you control your effort, and you can look at all of the hardships and the difficulties and the trials and say, oh, why does this have to happen to me? Or in those same circumstances, you can say, good, I have the chance to get better. So control your attitude, control your effort, control your positivity so you can go out there and make a difference.